Today is called Low Sunday and also Divine Mercy Sunday. It concludes the octave of Easter, the eight days of continuous celebration of the Lord's resurrection. In the early church, the newly baptized Christians would lay aside the white garments they had received at baptism and place them in the church's wardrobe as a memorial and a testimony of their baptism. After this, they took their place within the assembly of believers, called to walk by faith ever after. We may perhaps think that Jesus' earliest disciples found it easy to have faith, but St. Luke says otherwise. In their joy, they, the disciples, were still disbelieving and still wondering. The Apostle Thomas is the best known of those who doubted. He said, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Only when Thomas sees for himself does he exclaim, My Lord and my God. And what does the risen Christ say to Thomas? He says, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. As the letter to the Hebrews says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The doubting Thomases have always been numerous. They feel drawn to the person of Christ, but find it hard to accept the testimony of the apostles and of the apostles' successors in the church. How often have we heard the refrain, I love Jesus, but I don't like his church or the people who claim to be his followers. Can't we just bypass priests and bishops and sacraments and tradition and dogma and go straight to Jesus ourselves? Well, the short answer is no. We cannot go to Jesus while bypassing his body. From Christ's wounded side, the side that Thomas wanted to touch, flowed the water of baptism and the blood of the Eucharist. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that many signs and wonders were done among the people by the hands of the Apostles, and that the sick were laid out on beds and pallets, so that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The divine mercy in the proclamation of the gospel and in the sacraments comes to us from the sacred heart of Jesus through the apostles. Let us then speak of Catholic Eucharistic doctrine, for the Eucharist is the mystery of faith. The very word Eucharist means thanksgiving. That term makes clear that the Eucharistic action is primarily ascending toward God. The Mass is Christ's own sacrifice on the cross, made present in an unbloody, sacramental way, in the great prayer of praise and thanksgiving. The prophet Malachi prophesied that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure oblation, or sacrifice, would be offered among the nations. This prophecy is fulfilled in the Eucharistic sacrifice. Thus, the letter to the Hebrews says that we have an altar from which those who serve the tent, that is, the Jerusalem temple, have no right to eat. In the sacrifice of the Mass, Christ is the divine human gift offered to the Father. In the Holy Communion, Christ is that very gift received in faith, the living bread descending from heaven. Christ is both our eternal high priest and the sacrificial victim. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, the matter is wheat bread and grape wine. The form is the words, this is my body and this is my blood. The minister is a priest. The effects of receiving Holy Communion are fourfold. First, union with Christ and thus with our fellow Christians. Second, forgiveness of venial sins. Third, preservation from committing future sins. And fourth, the foretaste of heaven. Christ promises his body and blood in the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. 
I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. St. John tells us that many who heard Jesus' words were shocked by them, and said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? After this, many of his disciples drew back, and no longer went about with him. When Jesus asked the twelve if they too would go away, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Catholic Church has always taken Jesus at his word. In the Blessed Sacrament, the whole Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. That means that his body, blood, soul, and divinity are present. The change of the substance of the bread and wine into the substance of Christ's body and blood is called transubstantiation. The presence begins at the consecration and continues as long as the outward appearances of bread and wine continue. Christ is present, whole and entire, under the species of both bread and wine. If we believe our, our Redeemer's words, certain consequences follow. First, we worship the Blessed Sacrament as Jesus Christ himself. Second, we dare not approach this sacred mystery in a casual or flippant way. St. Paul warns the Corinthians about the dangers of unworthy communion. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself, rather than blessing. The letter to the Hebrews expressed the true Eucharistic spirit in these words, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship, with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. A practicing Catholic is bound, if possible, to receive Holy Communion at least once a year in Eastertide. Those who are conscious of serious sin should come to Mass to offer the Holy Sacrifice to God, but not yet come to Communion until they have gone to confession and been absolved. We do not teach this because we wish to exclude anyone. Rather, it is because those who are in serious sin are not yet ready to receive. Think of a very sick person who cannot take in or digest solid food. It would not be a kindness to feed such food to him until he is sufficiently recovered to benefit from it. St. Paul says to the Corinthian Christians that some are not yet spiritually ready for solid food. This is applicable to Holy Communion. Sometimes we need to have our spiritual digestive system healed by confession and absolution before we can benefit from receiving the bread that has come down from heaven. By faith, we know that the Blessed Sacrament is truly our Emmanuel, God with us. In our risen Savior's presence, let us always say, in St. Thomas's words, my Lord and my God.